Modding is an amazing way to keep a game fresh. Games like Skyrim, Garry's Mod, and even the best-selling game of all time, Minecraft, can attribute a lot of their success from their thriving modding communities. All of these three games were made over a decade ago, but thanks to mods, they stay constantly fresh. If you watched my channel before, then hi, welcome back, I love you, but if you haven't, I mainly play a Minecraft mod called Cobblemon. Cobblemon is an amazing mod which brings the magic of Pokemon to Minecraft. One of the things that makes Cobblemon so special to me, and a lot of you I'm sure, is that it is open source, meaning the coding for the mod is readily available to anyone. This opens up an avenue for data packs and add-on mods to enhance your experience playing Cobblemon. So today, I want to go through some standout add-ons to keep Cobblemon fresh. Let me know which ones you like the most, and stick around because I'm saving the best ones for last. Oh, and also, if you want to see other Minecraft mods that compliment Cobblemon, check out this video too. Hope you guys enjoy, leave a like because I like you, man, and enjoy the best Cobblemon side mods and add-ons. Alright, the first mod we are going to be looking at is a pretty self-explanatory one. It's called Cobblemon Capture XP, made by Tim Inc. And it does exactly what you think it does when you capture a Pokemon uh, in a battle. Not you, Sheep, the Pokemon. When you capture a Pokemon in a battle, you actually gain XP as if you had knocked out that Pokemon. So the requirements for giving you XP is not a Pokemon fainting, but a Pokemon being caught. Now, that means you do need to be in a battle, so I'll show you. Uh, you know, my Charizard versus this Taillow, and I really want this Taillow. Taillow's you know, one of my favorite Pokemon, so we'll go ahead and throw a Master Ball at it. And we got it, and you'll notice that Charizard received 4 XP. Now, uh, like, if I caught this higher level Linoon, uh, I'll show you, we'll get more XP. It's the exact same amount as if you were to knock it out. Uh, for at least from what I can tell. I don't know if that's the exact science behind it. Either way, all I know is that you'll be getting a lot of juicy, juicy XP whenever you catch Pokemon. Again, that is the Cobblemon Capture XP by Tim Inc. Alright, the next mod we are going to be looking at is called Cobblemon Unchained. Again, by Tim Inc. This one's very interesting. So, it means that Pokemon that naturally spawn can have their hidden abilities. So, that unlocks the ability to get hidden abilities in the game. And knocking out Pokemon... Uh, or, or capturing them will increase nearby shiny rates and also give perfect IVs to nearby spawns. So you'll notice I spawned a lot of these Pikachu around. And if I were to go ahead and catch a couple of these. But you'll notice that I've captured five Pikachu. It tells me in the chat here how many Pikachu I've caught. But as far as I know, this means that we are going to be getting a lot more uh, chances for Pokemon to be shiny. As well as to potentially uh, contain... Uh, perfect IVs if they were to spawn after big catch chains. This is, uh, you know, reminiscent of the catch chains that you get from Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, where the Pokemon get stronger and have a higher shiny chance the more you catch. Really cool addition just to have in your world, just uh, to reward you and also help you out in finding shiny Pokemon. Again, this is Cobblemon Unchained by Tim and Alright, the next one I want to take a look at is the Cobblepedia mod by Vinny Stalk. Um, this one's really cool because especially if you're brand new to Cobblemon, uh, you can kind of see everything you need to see. And it also uh, gives you links a lot to the, to the wiki. Uh, all the crafting recipes you might need uh, kind of mitigates the, the need for JEI, which is this mod over here to see crafting recipes if I want to make a magnet as opposed to I could just go in here and find where would be held items and then go to list of held items and it's in alphabetical order so if I find magnet type boosting items there and then magnet I, I can see how to craft it right here and I could shift click for this recipe as well you know since I can get that from a blue apricorn so it's, it goes pretty in depth there's a lot of different areas um, a lot of times though it does just put you back to the wiki like if I'm looking for um, uh, unique Pokemon forms instead of listing all of them it just tells me to go to the wiki page which will bring me to the unique forms on the, the uh, wiki.com uh, so I mean it's just an easy way to get to the wiki and it's very well organized um, having all the commands that you might need, having every item in general, how to make every Pokeball. If you have the mod downloaded, you will spawn with this uh, on-world creation, but you can also craft it with a Apricorn and a book. 
all in all, I'd recommend this mod if you are the type of person to only have maybe one monitor and you can't afford to keep going back and forth throughout the wiki, or if you just like to have a little refresher of things like, oh shoot, um, I do not remember how to make an Ultra Ball. Maybe I should look at that. But there are some things that JEI might not tell you, like the commands that you know, um, exactly how to do everything, you know, how to find evolution stones. Uh, it should tell you exactly the the criteria in which they spawn uh, and what biomes things spawn in so it's pretty much just a substitute for the wiki this is the cobblepedia by vinnie stalk all right this next mod is where we start getting into the territory of 100 percent confirmed planned features of cobble mob that independent developers uh, have gone ahead and added into the mod themselves using side mods so this one is called cob breeding by ludichat31 and fazuki now you can use this, it's it's pretty similar to the actual games where um, you can inherit IVs using items like the power items or destiny knots. You you can get forms inherited. So if you have like a an Alolan Ratata and a regular Ratata, um, abilities can be inherited. Uh, you can inherit what Pokeball it has. Shiny hunting is also very uh, good for this. We have the Masuda method, which if you don't know what that is, is if you have two Pokemon from different uh, regions of the world uh, that you, you trade with somebody from, like you have a German uh, Charmander with a Spanish Charmander, you actually have a huge bump in uh, getting a Shiny. Uh, and that actually works in this too. You just need to be on a multiplayer server and have two separate Pokemon in the pasture block that could spawn an egg. So like if this was my friend's ditto and my Charizard in here, we would have a huge increase to the shiny uh, chances. Now there's a bunch of different shiny modifiers that could be done through the configs, uh, such as like Gen 2 method uh, with DVs and such, but uh, I think uh, the Masuda method is, is, is the default for a reason. It's, it's just super cool. But if you know, if you're only uh, playing with yourself, and you don't have any friends, which me, me neither, it's okay. Uh, you, you can play like this. All in all, this mod is super awesome for if you are excited for breeding to come to Cobblemon, but you are a little impatient. All in all, it's a really cool mod that integrates a lot of things already in the mod with the new eggs, and I'm really excited to see what they will do to update uh, this, and potentially if we see any of these assets used in the official Cobblemon mod. This is Cobb Breeding by Ludachat and Fazuki. Alright, the next mod is going to be the Cobblemon Myths and Legends mod by Dr. Leon. This one is a feature that everybody has been asking me, when's it coming to Cobblemon? Like, I know, but it adds uh, legendaries uh, into the game. There are all these different items that you're now able to find in the world in random loot chests. Uh, now, they're extremely rare. Um, I'm at this desert temple. I went to a woodland mansion, two different mine shafts, a, uh, two different desert pyramids, uh, a stronghold, and now this. And I was only able to find one just to make sure that they even existed. That's not the right chest. In this one, I was able to find a rusted shield. Which, if used in a taiga biome, should spawn our friend Zamazenta, the, the, sh the shield-wielding dog of legends. Alright, I also realized that if we're looking for Zamazenta, uh, it doesn't have a model in the game yet, so we're not going to be able to see it. So what I decided to do is I know that Rayquaza uh, is in the game. So I've got the Jade Orb here, and I'm in a uh, jungle biome. So essentially the way that the spawning of the legendaries in this mod works is if uh, you are able to find one of the extremely rare items in, in one of their chests uh, and then go to the biome associated with the le legendary, uh, there is a chance that the legendary can spawn. It puts the legendary in the spawn table. I'm not sure exactly how rare it is, so I, it's probably unlikely that I'll find one on camera. You'll see I've got the names uh, showing on my minimap just hoping that I see Rayquaza. If I were to have found one, it would look like this. Oh my gosh, look, it says Rayquaza on the map, and there's Rayquaza right here. But yeah, again, a uh, really cool mod. 
uh, cool to have on a server uh, where you can get with a bunch of friends to try and increase spawns in a certain biome. Again, this is the Kabumon Myths and Legends add-on by Dr. Leon. Um, the sixth mod I'm going to show you, probably the biggest addition to the game, um, considering it adds in a ton of new sprites and new Pokemon, is Ascension's Megamons by Ascension Development. Now this overhauls the entirety of the mod to add Mega Evolutions. Now if you have the mod installed, you'll get the Megamons Guide, um, which also could be crafted, but it will tell you everything you need to know getting started and what to do. So it tells you that you need to find a geode and that you can get resources inside those. So let's try and find one. All right, this is what the geodes will look like. They'll be covered by this block called Anisterite, um, which is used in a lot of different things crafting wise. Um, if I were to go ahead and find it here, um, we could use it to make the keystone which we'll need to make the Mega Cuff, which we'll need to actually evolve our uh, our, our Kabamon, um, as well as make the guidebook you need if you lose the one that you get. But if you find these, I mean, they're really cool because they also will give you a lot of, like, stones, like evolution stones. Uh, geodes aren't super uncommon, but finding Mega Stones in them seems to be rather uncommon. All right, so... Now that we have found our, our Mega Stones, we were able to craft the Mega Cuff using the Keystone, and now it's on to making a Mega Stone. Which of course, you mine that, and then if you use the raw Mega Stone at a Stone Cutter, you get the actual Mega Stone. Um, and then when it comes to evolving them, you just go ahead and right click the, uh, the Pokemon with the Mega Cuff, and they will Mega Evolve. Um, and I kind of just want to go through these six and just show you these are my favorite ones. So you've got the Mega Venusaur. Now again, uh, this mod is so cool because it adds in these custom models and textures for the Kabamon. Um, of course, you can't go wrong with Mega Charizard X. This thing is absolutely legendary. We have Mega Mewtwo Y. Oh, he looks... I love him, actually. It, it looks... I love how his... His tail slash hair, I don't really know, is like defying gravity. And then let's take a look at what Mega Mewtwo X looks like. He gets way taller. Now for the time being, it looks as if they only have the first generation of Pokemon, all with their Mega Evolutions. They're working on a uh, the Gen 2 Pokemon as we speak. So super cool stuff. They also say they're working on a lot of other cool surprises. So this is definitely one of those mods that you're gonna want to pay attention to because it can only get better. This is the Ascensions Mega Mons by the Ascension Development Team, um, and that includes the uh, the, the users uh, Dragon Mortar, Genotype, and Jesty. And there you have it. Some amazing mods I was able to find to enhance your Kabamon experience. Of course, all props go to the creators of the mods who took time out of their lives to develop such amazing concepts. If playing with add-ons isn't your thing and you want a more vanilla experience for Kabamon, consider joining my Kabamon server. It's Kabamon. We have a super dedicated community and run events often, so you won't want to miss it. All the downloads for the mods will be down in the description, so check out whichever you want, and don't forget to download their dependencies. Thank you so much for watching this video, subscribe if you want to see more, and like if you want more to see. I've been Eerie, and you have an amazing day.